In this video, I'm going to discuss a few items that are really confusing to students. I'm going to discuss p-values, alpha, z-scores, and critical values, commonalities and differences between all these. Let me draw in my handy-dandy bell curve. The first thing I'm going to talk about are critical values. And in this video, I'm going to discuss a 95% confidence level. I put a link to a video that describes or actually shows you how to calculate the 1.96, where that comes from. The shaded red area is the rejection region, and 1.96 marks the boundary of the rejection region, and that's the purpose of a critical value. It's the boundary of your rejection region. So now let's imagine I do some tests during the experiment and my calculated z-score is 2.6. Now I check to see is 2.6 in the rejection region. In this case it is. I compare my calculated z-score with my critical value. And I compare these two values. And it is in the rejection region, so I would reject the null hypothesis. So we take the critical value and we compare that to some type of test result. In this case, the test was a z-score. The result was a z-score. Now I'm going to talk about alpha. So this green area represents 95% of my observations, or 0.95. That means there's 0 0.025 in each of the tails. Let me show you how I calculate that real quick. So I take 0.95 plus 0 0.05, and this adds up to 1, or 100%. Now I take 0 0.05 and I distribute that between two tails or divide by two. And 0 0.05 is actually equal to alpha. I divide by two. And this equates to 0 0.025 and I put that in both of the uh, tails. So you'll often see this alpha divided by 2 written like this, this alpha divided by 2, and put in both tails. This alpha divided by 2 appears in equations like the confidence interval, and that's where that alpha divided by 2 comes from, because we're doing a two-tail test. Now p-value. Just to be clear, all this adds up to 1. You take 0 0.025 plus 0.95 plus 0 0.025. This all adds up to 1. Now, if I go back to my experiment I talked about the, where I got a z-score of 2.6, my p-value tells me how significant my result is. And I could write this as p-value is less than 0 0.025. The probability of me getting this result by some random luck is less than 0 0.025. And 0 0.025 is the entire area in the upper tail. I can calculate the exact p-value or look that up in a table. The exact p-value is the area above 2.6. The area, the exact p-value, is equal to 0 0.0047. That is the exact area. In the back of all statistics book, there's a thing called a normalized table with z-scores and probabilities. And in this table, I would look for the z-score of 2.6. which is right here, and that has a p-value of 0 0.0047. I put a link to a video that shows you how to do this in ad nauseum level, so you can understand what I just did there, but there's a link below to another video. And that is where the 0 0.0047 comes from. You can write p is equal to 0 0.0047 or p is less than 0 0.025, and both are correct. Critical values mark the rejection region, the boundaries of my rejection regions. And if I get test results in the rejection region, I reject the null hypothesis. Alpha is the area in my tails. For example, 0 0.025 in this case. And it can be either the upper tail or lower tail. I can also calculate the exact p-value or look it up in a table. 0 0.025 is the actual area in the upper tail in this case. Let me show you that. It's this area right here. 
I can also look up the exact p-value or calculate it. In this case, the exact area is 0 0.0047. Like I said before, you can write either p is equal to 0 0.0047 or write p is less than 0 0.025. Both are equally correct. It's just what's required by your professor or a journal if you're submitting to a journal. Remember, I put some links to related videos below, and I'd encourage you to watch those. So remember to share the knowledge, share the love, Facebook, Google+, Plus, Twitter, links and stuff below. Subscribe. Like me, please, like me. Somebody likes me.